How's it going guys? It's Mr. Lone Wolf again. <laughs> I'm uh, yeah, getting a second video out just to catch up on things a little bit. Um, I'm going to do this contract to unlock the Derry Special 15C-177. It's another one with a phone number after think of a name for it. Um, yeah, so this contract is called Looking for the Fire Monster. Um, and the actual Derry itself is kind of located pretty much in the middle of the map. So I'm going to follow a similar route to the last mission, but I'm going to cut around kind of a dirt track, go across the waterfall, connect back to the road, it just seems to be a slightly quicker way. And then yeah, the derry is there, kind of tipped over in a lake, and uh, you basically you've got to repair it and then recover it as well. So if you took two loafs, you could actually fully fix it and refuel it and everything, but it's then going to make you drag it back to here, which is essentially the the garage anyway, and obviously now I've got the trailer store unlocked. There's no point in taking all the supplies needed to fix it up because, yeah, I may as well just drag it back to the garage, spawn a trailer, and kind of fix it up that way. So, uh, yeah, for this mission, I decided to take the uh, dolphin in the end because uh, this truck, the Derry, is kind of like a a bigger version of the, uh, the dolphin, really. It's like rescuing its bigger brother. So, I thought I'd send that out. Obviously, got a goddamn professional with me. Just to be safe, just in case I tip over or, uh, again, I've got supplies and all that, but yeah, uh, I could have towed another loaf behind me and then fixed it fully up, but even if you do fix it up there as well, whilst you're towing it back, there's a slim chance you could, you know, bump it, tip it, whatever, you're going to use the fuel, all that sort of stuff, so uh, you may as well just save it until you're back at the garage, really. I apologize, there's a tiny little glitch there. Instead of properly cutting round through the town, I just kind of found a little, uh, gap there to squeeze my way through. <laughs> That's what she said. Um, yeah, and then like I say, the mission I did uh, earlier, I suppose, with the uh, Pacific P512, I kind of headed this way. To be honest, I think just about every contract I've done so far kind of got me heading this way. I think the very first mission I peeled off up that way. Um, but yeah, this time going to carry on a little further to this road. And then, as I said, it eventually kind of you pop out near a waterfall that you can it's a little bit rough, it's uh, a little bit risk of tipping and that, but uh, yeah, it kind of cuts out some of the journey from it winding around. Again, like this map, I really do like it. The only thing I think it could do with is, from where you are at the garage in the bottom right, it'd be nice if there was a some kind of road that did connect to kind of like the island in the middle. Um, there's a lot of roads that kind of snake around the long way to get there, so we'll see. Maybe... Uh, as I explore a little bit more, there might be like a little river section that you can actually cut through. But for now, this is fine. I'm not like, it's not the end of the world. It's just, uh, yeah, at the minute I sort of keep having to go the same way. I've not really had a mission where I set off and go left out of the garage and kind of down the south end of the map really so far. Uh, yeah, you can see with this uh, cutting across the waterfall, it's a little bit bumpy with the rocks. And obviously you don't want to swerve too far to the right. Again, pretty nice view though. And you can see, I mean, this, well, it kind of is a route to cut across, but the road seems to end at, like, that little camper uh, caravan thing that was kind of sat there. You can cut across this waterfall, but then you can see, when you get to the other side, it's not really, like, specifically a main road. You're now kind of threading your way uh, through the trees. But I don't mind, that'll do. I actually came through that way um, yesterday or the day before, when I was doing the exploration video. Uh, I took the loaf, went for a, a right good blast with the loaf, it was a good bit of fun as well. He was flying around all over the place, squeezing his way through the trees. Uh, yeah, that was when I was just trying to get every little bit of the map uncovered, really. And I think at this point, again, this is like a pretty similar route to what I did on the mission earlier, because I basically drove right past the dairy, but there's not... it's just the order it's been done in, really. Yeah. In the contracts, like the first two contracts that you had that were unlocked, um, were fixing the garage, so it was like the service center, and then that one that was um, something for burned out infrastructure. And once you complete those two, you unlock like loads more missions, so you kind of had to do those two first, really. And then, yeah, now I've got more missions unlocked, obviously. I wanted to do this one sooner rather than later because I want this vehicle, like, yeah, I'm wanting to test it out and all the rest of it. And that's why I've ended up doing like a second video for tonight, because I just don't want to get sort of... I don't know, there's you know there's going to be a fair few videos kind of I want to get out sooner rather than later, uh, rescuing this 
a truck but then I'm also going to do like a gameplay and review of this truck uh, I want to get on do the exploration video for the next map pretty soon and then I'll get the Zix unlocked then I've got to do gameplay and review video for that um, yeah so just so I don't fall behind too much just wanted to get this uh, this rescue done and then uh, like say yeah pretty soon I'll do the gameplay and review on this this is certainly the truck I've been looking forward to the most. The Zix seems cool or whatever, but I'm not too fussed either way. It's a little four-wheeled vehicle that we've got other ones like it, and it's only got a single sideboard bed thing on the back, so I probably won't be using it a hell of a lot. Whereas, uh, yeah, this thing does look pretty cool. And I think in real life it's an Oshkosh because it's dairy, but yeah, it's cool. Is it a Hemet or something? It's usually in capital letters. There's a video that keeps popping up on my video feed and um, there's one of these driving off a trailer I think I've watched it before not for a little while um, yeah you can see there it's kind of looks fairly similar to the dolphin it's certainly got a better shaped chin uh, it's bigger I would say as well <laughs> that's what she said of course um, it's pretty cool though the tyres are bigger uh, the thing's just a little bit longer in general and the suspension seems to sit quite nice and high I was just checking there just to see what damage it's got as in like if it had a complete destroyed fuel tank or whatever, I'd probably fix that. Um, yeah, and just to pick a different way, really, back to the garage, so I'm not constantly doubling back on the same route. I've kind of uh, there's a little road peeling off here, which again, it doesn't really tell you on the map. You can't see it as like a proper road, but it's there. I can see the tire tracks of it, so yeah, decided to go that way. And yeah, with the damage on the vehicle, there's uh, the, everything's like a little bit damaged, but there's nothing that should cause any issues. It has got some fuel in it, so you can, now I'm towing it, I can like press square and turn the engine on so it's uh, putting in a little bit of effort behind me. <laughs> Sounds pretty awkward. Um, yeah, and like I say, the fuel tank's got enough, the engine's not completely deleted or anything, so... I can't remember how many points it needed at the end. I, I'm pretty certain it was less than 600, because as I said, I worked out that with two loaves I could get it fully done. And then the fuel was, I think, over 200 because I would have needed more than uh, one loaf's worth. But, yeah, it's once I get back to the garage, I can just spawn the trailers that have got, like, well, by then you've basically got unlimited points. As I'm dragging it along now, well, it's going alright. Um, it's always been the way in this game, not just this phase. But when you do, like, a road train situation, which I'm essentially doing... The game stops you, it's got like a speed cap on it, so I can't go any faster than I am now, and it's just always been awkward, because it's a few mile an hour less than the high gear naturally wants to, like the pace that wants to sit at, so it can always be a bit awkward trying to get it into high gear and run along smoothly, because it's just the game itself is like holding you back from just winding up to that kind of speed. I wish they'd uh, adjust that a little bit, just to let us go, like the speed of high gear would be quite nice. I remember even, well yeah, as far back as on the original game when you had to like rescue that derry that was uh, lost down the hill and a few other things, it was, well, it's funny actually, that was a derry as well, yeah, and they seem to like it in this game with uh, rescuing the derries specifically. But yeah, once you actually get into high gear and get wound up in high gear, it kind of it stays in it pretty well. And uh, overall first impressions of the truck, I like the look of it to be honest, I definitely, yeah this is more the sort of stuff I wanted them to add to the game, as I said each phase we kind of get, I suppose the phase where we got the Tatra Phoenix and the Tatra Force was pretty cool, that was similarish trucks, this just looks like a bigger more hefty truck, it's funny because as I was flicking through uh, to choose a truck to go and rescue this one, you suddenly realise like we've got lots of trucks but we haven't got that many that are like big massive gigantic trucks that are kind of suited for rescuing other vehicles and I know we've got stuff like the Colobs are pretty big and all that and to be fair the Colob would have made pretty easy work of this as well but the Colob even then it's I don't know it's, there's not a lot you can't put like a sideboard on it it's very limited you can't have a crane all that sort of stuff um, this Derry actually looks like something you would send out as a rescue vehicle so yeah it's uh, good I'm looking forward to actually using it on some missions. But on some bits the uh... well it's not really that the dolphin's struggling it's just again I'm, I'm in auto at the minute because it's a little bit awkward getting it into high gear 
And it's funny because this map is doing the same thing. When I was driving along the roads, uh, obviously in this one I've got like the high range gearbox, so I've got eight auto gears. It was only letting me get up to like fourth and fifth gear really when you just mash the L1 button and make it jump up through the gears. So it's doing the same cap that it's been doing since like the last phase as well, phase eight. Where, yeah, it just won't, like, you used to be able to just, and I'm assuming if I go back to some of the earlier maps, it hopefully should still be that way. But when you'd set off and you mash L1, it'd pretty instantly jump up to, like, 6th, 7th gear. Normally, it'd, you'd have to manually let it go into 8th, but, yeah, you'd just jump up the gears pretty much instantly, whereas there still seems to be that cap going at the minute. But the map overall, 90 eight percent of the time you can sort of get into high gear especially with a truck like uh, the dolphin so yeah high gear is working out to be like quite a nice pace overall um, but yeah it's just funny because then there's various bits on the map that again like the same thing it's been doing since phase eight where you're in first gear out of eight and you're kind of driving on like a muddy road like I am now and uh, you mash in L1 and it won't even let you jump out of first gear which you used to be able to and then now while I was driving along towing this thing, it kept uh, jumping up to second gear and then kind of running out of revs and jumping back down to first. And it's, uh, yeah, kind of typical. <laughs> it's like the one time you actually want it to stay in first and not let you out of first, it suddenly, it can't wait. But you can see now, it's just, I was doing this to kind of prove it to myself. Um, as soon as I just went to the left of the roads, suddenly I can wind up into high gear and it's fine. And it just, that's what I've sort of been saying where it's like they specifically code the roads to slow you down but they haven't coded like the whole entire map so anytime you can kind of get off the road and just kind of freestyle it along anywhere but the roads um yeah the game kind of relaxes with all its restrictions and just sort of lets you tick along as normal also on a map like this with the amount of trees and everything else around you're not always gonna get to skip along the side of the road but it's a start, it's at least enough so you can just get it up into high gear and build the speed up. And uh, yeah, one thing I knew when I was taking the Dolphin is obviously it's not got the biggest fuel tank on it, so hence the, uh, the goddamn professional. It saves the day again. Like I say, it's basically the... Uh, the de facto roof rack for all the different trucks, just wearing like a backpack and <laughs> jobs are good. Let's change it back today. This is another one as well. It seems to be going dark pretty quick. It's nice and bright though when you're actually in midday. I tried it again earlier going to like the morning, but yeah, by the time it was heading to midday, it started going all cloudy and it was just even more dull. So, sod it, I'll have to uh, skip back to just keep going back to midday every two minutes. I suppose it could be worse, they could have made it all kind of like smoky and constantly cloudy from the uh, apparent forest fires. It'd be quite cool, I know it's probably a little bit too complicated and kind of too much hassle to code it that way, but it'd be quite cool if there was an actual fire going somewhere that was kind of sweeping through the forest. You know, like if you could every now and then, you wrong place, wrong time, it kind of catches you out and burns your truck a bit or damages it or whatever. Again, I'm sure the loaf. It'd be bulletproof. I was reading something earlier. There was a. It was, I don't even know where it was. It was saying in international waters that there was a. I think it was the British Navy have seized some ship that was sailing along that was apparently smuggling weapons. But I was thinking, like, how do they get to decide like to seize that ship and say that it's smuggling weapons when it's in international waters because it's like according to who because like what's to stop the other ship seizing the royal navy ship and saying well i'm arresting you <laughs> like if i was there with a loaf rowing along in the middle of the ocean with him packed full of uh, rpgs or something yeah well they'd try and fail to seize the loaf but I don't know how it works in international wars. Like, yeah, what's to stop you saying the other way around? Say, so right, loaf, cuff them. But it doesn't make any difference because it's like the. Technically, that navy ship is doing the same thing. <laughs> it's a ship packed full of weapons floating around in international waters, so. 
I wonder how they uh, figure that out. I reckon it's one of them. It's a bit like the Mafia, really. It's just the bigger... The bigger gang gets to... Uh, yeah, get the smaller gang and ask for a slice of the action. Not that I'm knocking the art, not in that specific situation, I'm just saying in general, like, if it's international waters, whose law applies? Like, if they're going to get done for smuggling weapons, there's obviously different penalties for that all around the world, so whose, uh, yeah, whose law would that fall under? And like I said, what's to stop the boat saying the same thing to the Royal Navy, really? Bit of an odd one. It's one of life's mysteries. It's like another one of life's mysteries I'd like to know. That happened to me earlier. Well, there's two, in fact. I was microwaving. I might yeah, microwave some milk because <laughs> I was making a, a milky hot chocolate, and the milk was hot enough that you could strip paint off a car. I reckon from how hot it was. Yet ten minutes later, if that, not even that, probably five minutes later. It's practically cold. It's like, how does it lose its temperature so quick? And the other thing was, I was originally going to say, uh, I then did some, shut the fridge, and was like, oh yeah, shit, I'm supposed to put the milk back. How and why does the fridge suddenly decide that the door is 56.8 times harder to open? Like, you open the fridge and it's normal, takes minimal effort, and then, yeah, if you shut the door and go to open it again quickly, I literally, like, pulled the door and the fridge leant forward, like if I'd carried on I would have tipped the whole fridge over instead of opening the door. I don't know how that works though, because it's technically it's only a magnet, it's like a magnetic fridge door, but what's the deal when it suddenly won't let you get <laughs> back in the fridge? It's like some right weird shit, but yeah. Have to about rip the door off to get back in there. We got in there though. Not letting it stop me. It's funny, because even when I was driving along the roads when I finally got back to Tarmac Roads towing this thing, uh, yeah, it was still a little bit sketchy in places with the high gear. Like I said, just one, once the high gear's wound up to speed, it's a nice speed, but when you first get into it, it kind of needs to build up. And yeah, just the rate that it lets you tow stuff behind you it just really sits at like an awkward speed where it doesn't quite want to fully fire up. And if you do, you're almost wheel spinning at that point. And yeah, there's the garage there. As I said, it's uh, the, it's just here, but it's in the same yard. I completely cocked up going around here as well. <laughs> tried to straighten up the steering, but did it a little bit too soon. And then tried to steer back out, but yeah, it's too slow. Not enough time, I think I smashed into that little gate post. So just drive it through that square, it automatically just kind of ticks that off the list. And then, yeah, you can see in the top right corner, it basically just says now to fix it up. And again, it's nice that there's kind of a way to drive the whole way around this uh, garage building. So you don't have to, like there, for example, I would have had to have done some mad reversing manoeuvre and kind of drag it around. But yeah, because I can just uh, fly around the building, it's a lot easier. I still want to see at some point if I can actually steal those trailers that are in that trailer display thing. It's pretty good timing with the fuel as well. Obviously used a lot more fuel on the way back towing that thing. But yeah, the loaf timed it perfectly. Uh, so the amount of damage, I think, just off the top of my head, that it was better to get this trailer than the maintenance trailer, because I don't think I'd have enough in one hit. I think that's got like 356 repair points on it, so yeah, it was just easier to do this one. Get that done in one hit and then sell this trailer, go back to the maintenance trailer because it's got fuel. Why does well when you open the menu, it never starts on the trailer, even though that's obviously the, the one you want to be the source. But anyway, top that up, uh, yeah, mission done, obviously the reward is this truck. It's at 4,200, I think, money. Not great, but to be fair, we do get this truck, which could probably sell for... I didn't look at the price, to be honest, but I imagine 150, 200 odd, really, based off the price of the other one, anyway. And yeah, the, the little message says something like, oh, I'll take a look at that beauty. Um, yeah, now should have no problem putting fires out. So when in a parked up the dolphin, dolphin and life, the original pair... 
And yeah, this is it. Good start. The horn seems alright. Not the best, but not the worst. Uh, I recovered it anyway, just to fully... I know I've just repaired it, but... Just to get it all sorted. And uh, I won't go into too much detail, because I'm obviously going to do like a gameplay and review on this. But this is a quick look at it, when I've kind of fully done it up as much as I can. Uh, there's still an engine I need to get. There is like the most powerful engine, which takes it up to S on the power. At the minute, it's not too far off with the next one down, the Westline engine. But yeah, someone was saying in the comments that um, the top engine on this is like the most powerful engine in the game, so it seemed alright with this engine, but yeah, obviously I'm not going to say no, more power the better, especially with the way the game keeps kind of capping it. That was a little example of the turning circle, it is, yeah, takes about as much to turn as like a gigantic cargo ship, but it is what it is, it actually seems like a pretty cool vehicle, like I said the suspension sits tall, 55 inch tyres which is nice, because that's just quite big generally for the game, so the way most of the rocks and stuff are sized to catch most vehicles out, this one handles it pretty well. I can get on the lo uh, loaf on the roof, which is, uh, yeah, I would have had to have bought the whole mission if that wasn't possible. There's a quick look at it with the uh, sideboard as well. A few moments later. Well, it didn't take me long. <laughs> you name it and I'll roll it. Um, yeah, that's about it for today though. I hope you enjoyed. I hope that helps. Thanks for watching. Thanks to my Patreon members. Get yourself a loaf because he's a goddamn beast. And get one of these and I'll be back soon.